Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, September the 20th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Having all that out of the way, let's get it on. Uh, welcome to FOMC Day. This is the day where we are going to get the release of the FOMC statement and Fed Funds rate whether or not Yellen decides to change those rates, uh, I would have to say the odds on favorite is that they are gonna remain unchanged at 1.25%. And I believe that that's probably the odds on favor for the rest of the year. So don't get your hopes up for increasing interest rates and uh, mortgage brokers probably <laughs> are probably happy about that anyway. Um, actually, probably not. I mean, they probably wanna see the fear of interest rates increasing to get people to come out and refinance. So. All right, anyway, on to the overall markets. We've got over across the pond, we came up with some uh, German PPI, which is producer price index, slightly higher than expected at 0.2%, was expected to be 0.1%, and German repa or sorry, great, that was Great Britain, uh, no, German PPI, Great Britain retail sales, sorry, uh, came in at what, point excuse me, came in at 1%, was expected to be 0.2%, so much better than expected there. And they revised last month's number up slightly from 0.3% to 0.6%. So retail sales out of Great Britain looking quite nice. Uh, then back here in the United States, we had existing home sales come in at 5.35%, expected to be 5, or sorry, 5.3%. 5.35 million units expected to be 5.46 million units and that actually is a one-year low so uh, existing home sales pulling back some uh, retailers out there saying that there's just not any good inventory uh, out there so existing home sales pulling back uh, then we had crude oil inventories coming in at 4.6 million barrels expected to be 2.8 million barrels so disruption out of uh, Houston and out of Florida areas, some of the East Coast, uh, not really um, causing uh, much of a disruption. It seems we're still seeing a build in it. And that says to me that the uh, consumer really isn't consuming and probably manufacturers aren't really consuming as well. So uh, sorry, we had to stumble through all of the economic data, but we have that behind us now anyway. Uh, on to the overall markets, as we can see, that build of 4.6 million barrels isn't really affecting crude oil. You would think that a build would cause it to pull back, but we are seeing uh, crude oil move back into the $50 barrel area as it's up 92 cents on the day. And uh, across the board, we're seeing these uh, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, uh, really doing quite well conical phillips and i'll talk about conical phillips here in a minute but we have gold futures getting a little bit of a bounce here as we saw yesterday but today up six dollars on the day uh i don't really see it getting through this uh fibonacci level of where 1322 lies the 78 fib level so uh, i think that we're going to see it kind of continue to come off a little bit then on to the bonds right back down to where I was talking about this volume node where the most time and or actually where the most volume has been spent. Time node is just a little bit lower. I think we're gonna to continue to see this slump off, especially after we start seeing what the FOMC has to say in Janet Yellen. Uh, the VIX continuing to slide, staying above in uh, double digits, $10 right now, or 10 points right now. VIX coming off as we're continuing to see, you guessed it, all-time highs again in the Dow Jones Industrial Average again today. Uh, and NASDAQ, 
not doing quite as well. We're really seeing, I've been talking about this quite a lot, uh, a bit of a sector rotation out of tech and into the blue chips. Um, some weird things really going on today. Adobe beats on earnings and slumps off, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And we got FedEx who um, missed on earnings quite a bit and they are blasting to the upside. I think they have a uh, historical high going on today. Uh, then E-mini S&Ps, again, yes, all time historical highs. Uh, the NASDAQ needs to print 6,020 in order to get the all-time high. We said that 6,019.75 is the all-time high on that last chart, but that is actually done or uh, achieved overnight. So I think the NASDAQ has some catching up to do. So if you want to do like a Paris trade, uh, doing the uh, ES and the uh, NASDAQ, that might not be a bad call. Uh, on to... The daily chart of the mini S&Ps, just really quiet, almost considered an inside day as yesterday. We kind of broke out of that inside day just slightly, but today uh, very close to an inside day, just really quiet. Dow jo or the NASDAQ being down on the day, Dow Jones up on the day, e mini S&Ps up on the day, really mixed bag as you can see there. And a lot of that has to do with waiting for the FOMC as well. So, and that comes out at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, on to a couple of things that I've done. Adobe, I tweeted this out yesterday. I went in and sold the weekly uh, 149 uh, puts in there, collected 59 cents, really went against me quite a lot. As a matter of fact, now it's probably a really nice trade, but went against me quite a bit. So I got out for 52 cents as soon as we started seeing the market rally. I just pulled out of it, basically trying to get out for a scratch with my commissions. I kind of added in those commissions. I started seeing the market kind of bounce up on a uh, daily chart breakdown of 15 minutes or so segments and uh, decided just to put in a standing order there. All right, uh, then on to my IRA. In my IRA, I, I uh, got out of ConocoPhillips yesterday. Obviously, you can get out much better today as we blast it off and above this 38 Fibonacci level. Um, that being said, you can probably get out much better than where I got out of, uh, maybe even close to 50% on that max profit. I was pretty close to that. Uh, but when I had on the November and I had on the straddle, if you remember, I did the sh uh, long straddle in there where I paid $3.66. You need an outpaced move. I got that. Uh, it was perfect timing for that and got out for $4.55. So I'm happy about getting out at that price. Uh, you know, obviously, if you didn't get out yesterday, you could get out today probably for probably $4.75 at least, I would think. So um, I haven't checked those prices as I generally just kind of move on with my life in those kind of situations. Uh, but I got out of that. There was one other thing that I thought I needed to talk about that I just kind of remember. Oh, I ended up getting my Caterpillar trade. Uh, so to complete that pairs trade. So yesterday I talked about Caterpillar uh, being outpaced or being one that was kind of outpacing deer. As you can see, they kind of gapped up on basically nothing, just some talk that uh, the economic picture is turning around. I just talked about how deer was being a lagger in that. Uh, crops are looking pretty good, so I think deer is going to rally, but today we're getting a bit of a pullback, so that's nice. And in that Caterpillar, I ended up doing the Jan Ock uh, poor man's covered put. So in the January, I bought the 121 puts and then I sold the October uh, 120 puts in there for right around just over $12. So uh, I have that on short and then deer I have on as a long and deer yesterday blasted off quite nicely. It has covered this gap, uh, which I thought would take a little bit longer, but it's, it's moved quite nicely to the upside as well. So uh, that Paris trade is on and doing all right. Then on to AT&T. AT&T had a blast off yesterday. Uh, today even gapped up, touched that volume node that I talked about, the time and volume lining up right there. That was my target for AT&T to go up and test that. Uh, today we got that move to the upside, so I was able to get out of both my margin and my trading account for a nice profit, just slightly over 50% of my max profit on those. And in my IRA, I had on the October, was short the 
36 puts and then long the 33 puts to define that risk because in a margin account they really jam you on margin and I went along those rules of creating a synthetic uh, short put in my IRA so I talk about that how you can kind of limit your risk limit your margin a little bit but you you're limiting your risk quote unquote it's not that I would have ever let any one of these go this far against me to those 33 puts but it just kind of helps out that way and originally I did that strategy for 32 cents and bought it back for 15 cents in my IRA in my margin account uh, I did the October and just sold the 36 put outright naked and sold those for 39 cents bought them back for 17 cents today so that's about it that's what everything I've done from yesterday to today and haven't really added a whole lot other than that Adobe trade that, you know, luckily ended up being uh, a winner despite the fact that it really went against me. Um, and so kind of looking to add a couple of things to my portfolio, but I haven't really found anything that really has sparked my interest too much. So sitting on those, keeping a very close eye on Boeing, not really liking the way that trade is uh, working out, maybe pulling the ripcord on that. Uh, thought about moving my 145 puts up to the 155 mark to create that strangle um, but I haven't done anything yet it hasn't really moved much higher than 155 it has pierced through uh, to 156 but I haven't really made any moves on that so stay tuned for that I'll keep talking about that trade as I generally talk about the losers more often than the winners because I want you to know how to stay mechanical to create those positive trades so hopefully we'll get a bit of a pullback in Boeing and I won't have to worry too much more about that right so uh, Friday's webinar is going to be on the uh, short strangle it's a really good one one of my favorite trades especially we're heading into earnings uh, that's a good time when we get volatility expansion but I love the uh, strangle uh, so check it out I'll talk about all my rules you got to know the right strike location you got to right I have the right environment uh, and there's several other things that I'm going to be talking about in that webinar that you won't be able to find out anywhere online okay so that's all I got if you can't take that take it easy